Dearly beloved, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God has given one more week in our life. God has given a time to worship with you through this online. May we all feel the presence of God and worship Him. Shall we pray? O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Heavenly loving Father, thank you for this wonderful morning time, O oh God. Thank you for helping us feel your presence always, O oh Master. At this COVID-19 situation, you are protecting us and keeping us safe and providing all our needs, O oh Lord. And moreover, you have given us life to worship you. Please be present all through the worship time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we all sing from the church hymnal 227. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Let us worship God, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall sing forth your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise be to you, O God, the Father, who created all things by your power and wisdom, and loved the world so as to give your Son to be our Savior. Praise be to you, O God, the Son, who was made human like us in all things except sin, and was delivered for our offenses and raised against for our justification. Praise be to you, O God, the Holy Spirit, who does lead us into all truth and does shed abroad the love of God in our hearts. 
All praise and glory be to you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for ever and ever. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Let us kneel and examine ourselves in silence. Let us humbly confess our sins to the Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we should have done. And we have done those things which we should not have done. And there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spur thou them, O God, who confess their faults. Restore them that are penitent according to your promises declared to humankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful God, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and just life. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and remission for all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us continue to pray. Today's collect, people of God, ambassadors of Christ. People of God, ambassadors of Christ. O sovereign God, who urged us to be strong and courageous and entrusted us with the ministry of reconciliation, grant that we would not be afraid or discouraged to be the ambassadors of Christ, so that we could go out and proclaim and people would repent and believe in the gospel. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Songs of Praise, song number 242. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. After the song, pastoral prayer will be offered. Songs of Praise, song number 242.
Let us pray. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I call to you. When my heart is faint, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. Dear and loving Father, thank you for this wonderful morning time, O Lord. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to pray to you, O Master. Accept our thanksgiving and all the praises. Wholeheartedly, we worship you and praise you. And we would like to honor you in all our doings, O God. In thankfulness, we want to do all our actions. Help us to feel your presence always with us, O Lord. You have promised us your presence and you are truthful to that. Thank you, O God. Thank you for the wonderful life you have given unto us. Thank you for the good health you have given unto us. Yes, O God, you have given health and protection to all the St. John's family members. Thank you, O God. We commit all the members of St. John's, from children to elderly, O God. Protect all of them. Let your strength and your guidance may be with us always, O God. Almighty God, thank you for the responsibilities you have given to us as a church to witness for you, O God, and be an ambassador in the places wherever we are put up. Thank you for the different walks of life you have given unto us, O Master. With all that in all the realm of life, we need to honor you. We need to share you. We need to proclaim the good news, O God. For that very purpose, you have called us as a church, a band of people of liberators. Yes, O God, empower us for that very purpose at this COVID-19 situation, O God. Help us to give the hope which is needed and expected in the society, O Master. Help us to show the light in the darkness for which you have called us and enlightened us, O God. Almighty God, we commit all of us in your hand. You please take all of us and use us as an instrument in your hand, O Lord, so that we may be a channel of blessing in this society for the very cause you have created us. The purpose of our life and calling may be fulfilled in us, O God, by your word, you are guiding us. The scriptures are leading us and showing light to our paths, O God. Yes, O Master, let our meditation on your word may give us the needed direction in which we need to travel so that people may follow us and we may follow you and your men and women, O Lord. Thank you for accepting us as children, O God. Thank you for the inheritance you have promised unto us. And we need to be faithful unto you, O God. You are always faithful in your promises. Thank you, O Master. Most of the time, we failed 
in our vows, O oh Lord, in our promises with you, O oh God, with our oaths, O oh Master, but still you are protecting us, guiding us, and loving us, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Master. Empower us to lead this society. Yes, O oh God, we need to be change makers in this world. Use us as leavened flour, O oh Lord, so that the unleavened may be leavened by us, O oh God. Make use of us for your glory's sake. We commit our diocese and the leaders and all the linked dioceses, the Leicester Diocese in UK, Wyoming Diocese in USA, Mount Kilimanjaro Diocese in Tanzania, Kitato Diocese in Tanzania. Bless all of them, O oh God. Protect them from COVID-19 and bless the ministry, whichever they are entrusted and they are doing it for your glory. Same way, O oh Lord, we commit all our diocese and members and the whole of CSI and CSATA and then the officers and all the bishops, congregation of the Church of South India all over the world, O oh God, in your hands. Use them as your instruments and use them all as ambassadors for you, O oh God. Let the purpose of all of our life may be fulfilled. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we are privileged to have Mr. Raj Tilak and Mr. Rubu Tilak and his family members and they will lead us in the praise and worship. We welcome you all to this online Sunday worship. We are really happy and blessed to stand in this place of worship and to praise our God. We have selected a few chorus for this day, so let's all join and sing this first chorus, Great and mighty is the Lord our God, and followed by He is my everything, He is my all. Let's sing. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. makes our life complete and makes everything new. The next song talks about God's grace. A man of God says that we are the Benjamin generation. 
the end time generation that is marked by God's grace. If you see Benjamin, the youngest son of Jacob, he received unmerited favor from his elder brother Joseph. He was served five times as much as any of his brothers. So we are that chosen lot, that Benjamin generation is experiencing his unmerited favor. So let us sing this song, Living by Grace. Living by grace, living by grace, I'm living by grace, I'm living by God's grace, living by grace, living by grace, I'm saved, I'm forgiven by God's grace. The next song is a Tamil song. Esuvai nambi nor manda dillai, nenjame ni anji dade, nambi nore kirubai sool didude. If you are worried, depressed, or troubled, God says, Fear not. I will deliver you, and I will be with you in troubled times when you call upon my name. A thousand may fall at our side, ten thousand at our right side, but still it will not harm us. Because we have our Almighty at our right hand, we shall not be moved. So let us all join in this song. Thank you. 
அரசியல் சுவாசமுள்ள மாந்தரே நம்புவதல்ல தம் ஆலோசனை போர பயங்கர காற்றி தூ கண்மலை மேல் கட்டும் வீடு நிற்கும் நெஞ்சமே Let us pray. We thank you Lord for this wonderful time of worship. Thank you for being Emmanuel, for guarding us this far. You loved us Lord when we were we were sinners yet. You covered us with your blood. We thank you. We pray for all those who joined us in singing. Bless them and keep them safe. All this we ask in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Now the scripture portions will be read to us the first lesson for today is from the second letter of paul to the corinthians chapter 5 beginning from verse 15 to chapter 6 verse 10 second corinthians chapter 5 beginning from verse 15 and he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves but for him who for their sake died and was raised from now on therefore we regard no one according to the flesh even though we once regarded christ according to the flesh we regard him thus no longer therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation the old has passed away behold the new has come all this is from god who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that is in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation therefore we are ambassadors for Christ God making his appeal through us we implore you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to god for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of god working together with him then we appeal to you not to receive the grace of god in vain for he says in a favorable time i listen to you and in a day of salvation i have helped you behold Now is the favorable time behold now is the day of salvation we put no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry but as servants of god we commend ourselves in every way by great endurance in afflictions hardships calamities beatings imprisonments riots labors sleepless nights hunger by purity knowledge patience 
kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. Here ends the first lesson. Glory be to God. The second lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark's chapter 6 verses 7 to 13. St. Mark's chapter 6 verses 7 to 13. Jesus sends out the twelve apostles, and he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you, and they will not listen to you. When you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as the testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. Here ends the reading. Praise be to God. Now we'll sing from Songs of Praise 250. I love to tell the story of unseen things above. After the song, Reverend Indian will share the word of God.
let us pray god of truth and righteousness god who chose us to be his people lord we are blessed and privileged to be your people help us to learn from our savior and help us to replicate the values that we receive from our lord jesus christ lord talk to us through the holy scripture in jesus name we pray amen greetings to you all in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ this week our church prescribed us to meditate on the people of god ambassadors of christ people of god ambassadors of christ whenever we hear these words whenever we say these words that we are the people of god we are the children of god we are the chosen one and set apart for christ born again and these words whenever we say these words or we hear these words it gives immense pleasure and a sense of honor in our minds but are we actually worthy to call ourselves children of god or people of god we must think on that in a daily meditation book i happened to see a title our biggest single problem and that title made me to look what is that one single big problem it says that that the biggest single problem with the christians is disappointment with god disappointment with god because of something god did not do for us yes we people always seek god for our needs and wants and most often we don't consider about what we do for god we become seekers than doers we become receivers than givers we become proud than humble because we say that we are people of god we are children of god but for that we must be humble not proud but we become proud than humble and we always think about what we get from god rather what we do for god yes this week meditation suggests us that people of god must be ambassadors of christ again when we hear this word ambassador it it gives a feeling that wow what a privilege to be an ambassador for christ but let us look into the meaning of that word the secular meaning of ambassadors is an official who represents his or her own country in a foreign country that is ambassador represents the culture the tradition the law and the practices of his or her country and its people today in our meditation we are called to be ambassadors but ambassadors for christ then what is expected from us how can we become ambassadors for christ let us look into the passages and see what god wants us to be firstly ambassador for christ be strong and courageous ambassador for christ be strong and courageous as i said earlier when we hear this word ambassadors many things comes to our mind maybe they are powerful post a lavish living huge salary privileges in their country and in foreign countries and the ambassador is one who will stand between two countries a diplomat it's a powerful he's a powerful person and it's a powerful post but to be an ambassador of christ is not a privileged post or a powerful post but a responsible one not a powerful post but a responsible one here in the old testament passage joshua chapter 1 verses 1 to 9 god is commissioning joshua after death of moses and if we look into that passage a little more deeper we can see the phrase be strong and courageous and that comes around three times in the same passage three occurrences in that nine verse be strong and courageous in verse 6 verse 7 and verse 
why three occurrences why god uses this phrase three times in that passage let's see why because god's expectation on joshua is that joshua will lead the people to the promised nation this is god's expectation but what joshua is thinking but i feel i think that joshua is little hesitant it might be because he knows the people he knows the people from egypt joshua is traveling with them from egypt he knows that he they are stiff necked people they are the people who questions and complains god always and throughout their travel we can read in exodus that they were complaining to moses that is it because there are no graves in egypt that you have taken us away to die in wilderness and they were grumbling for meat they are grumbling for water and joshua knows all these things he was with them from egypt so joshua might be a little hesitant uh, to take take up the leadership role and joshua feels that he is weak and he thinks that it is impossible for him to lead this group of people into the promised land because they are stiff necked and because of their uh, questioning and complaining nature but god he strengthens joshua to be strong and courageous even though joshua feels that it is not possible for him to do but god chose him and he strengthens joshua to be strong and courageous god make impossible to possible god strengthens joshua by affirming him that god will be with him as god was with moses that we can read in verse 6 just as i was with moses so i will be with you i will not leave you nor forsake you joshua chapter 1 verse 6 the other two occurrences of the same verse uh, be strong and courageous is in verse 7 and 9 and there also we can see that uh, god affirms joshua that he will be with him always and joshua must follow the commandments given by moses the following verses after after ninth verse from 10 we can see that joshua takes up the role of a leader joshua assumes command over the people yes because god strengthened joshua joshua now is ready to take up the leadership and to lead the people into promised nation at first joshua thought that it is not possible for him to lead this people into promised nation but after god strengthens him strengthens him with the words that i will be with you as i was with moses he is now got strength from god and he is ready to lead people into promised nation yes we christians many a time not ready to take up god's mission we also feel like joshua that we are not ready to take up the mission we, we think that we, it's impossible for us to do this mission or we it is impossible for us to do this work but god is ready to strengthen us up we are people of god and we are appointed as the ambassadors of christ be strong and courageous and our lord god is with you as he was with moses and as he was with joshua be strong and courageous to take up god's mission secondly ambassadors for christ reconcile the epistle passage is from second corinthians chapter 5 verses 16 to chapter 6 verse 10 i like to focus your vision on two main points in this passage one is the ministry of reconciliation Paul explains to the Corinthian church about reconciliation and calls them to be ambassadors of Christ. In verse 18 to 20 in verses 18 to 20 God through Christ reconciled us to God and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. This is the verse that we re- read in the passage. As we are reconciled with God through Christ we are called to be ambassadors of Christ. making others to reconcile with god this is somewhat like doing what we received we are saved by christ and it is our bound duty to save others that is the crux of that passage we are saved by christ and it is our bound duty to save others this might look easy 
but it is never easy we hear these words from many preachers many pastors in their sermons that is that we must save people and we must bring people to christ it seems very easy um, to say it's it, it's easy to hear these words and it's not easy to put it in practice many will say and even many of us even you would have uh, said these verses in your lives that i need to save people and i have god gave me a mission to save others and it's my duty to save people but it's not easy let us look into our lives most of us born in a christian family and from childhood we know and follow christ and we believe that christ died for us and christ saved us and we need to follow and replicate christ but let us check now how many non christians accepted christ through us to put it in other words we are reconciled we are reconciled by christ but how many reconciled to god through us i am saved how many i saved in my life it is easy to speak about reconciliation when we talk about reconciliation it's easy to speak it's easy to say that you must save others you you are an instrument in god's hand and you must save others it's easy to say but how about putting in practice and putting into practice that's not an easy way and that comes with a price paul clearly tells about that price and that is the other main point that i like you to focus on so the first point is ministry of reconciliation that we must reconcile others to god others must reconcile through us we are saved and we must save others that is reconciliation that is ministry of reconciliation second one is how that we can put it in practice that's not an easy job that's not an easy act that to make others to reconcile with god that comes with a price what is that in the passage second corinthians chapter 6 4 to 9 where he shares about the hurdles he faced in his life uh, we can read like in afflictions in hardships calamities imprisonment riots sleepless nights hunger with all these hardships he shared genuine love truthful speech righteous act and many more reconciling others with god involves all these hardships it's not easy or it involves all these hardships but we never realizes that there are many faced these hardships to save us we are saved because someone faced these hardships in their lives we know that there are many missionaries who came here and shared god's love to us and they they faced hardships in their lives they they died in ship many missionaries died in ship and many died of malaria died of cholera they lost their families they lost their children they lost their home to share good news for us and because of their sacrificial life we came to know the love of god we understand the hope that is given by jesus christ and we are saved by those missionaries who faced many hardships in their life and now it is our duty to be an ambassador of christ we received from them we are reconciled to god through missionaries and now it is our bound duty to reconcile others with god through us it is it is our duty and paul stresses that if you are reconciled with god then you become the ambassador of christ and bring others to god yes we are saved we are reconciled to christ as ambassadors of christ we are called to stand up and ready to reconcile others to god through our lives not just by words thirdly ambassadors for christ go out the great commission of christ go out into all the world and proclaim good news to the whole creation st mark chapter 16 verse 15 is given not just to disciples but to all of us but are we ready to go out and as a christians uh, we are reminded to go out 
in every Sunday service. And after the service, uh, the pastor will say, Lord be with you. And he says, depart with peace or go out in peace. And these words are to remind us that God will be with us and we are set out to go out and preach the gospel. As ambassadors of Christ, we are representatives of Christ and we must replicate him in our living. As I said in the introduction, ambassadors represent their nation. Likewise, as ambassadors of Christ, we must represent Christ. When I say representatives of Christ, we must be more cautious and we must guard ourselves against the danger of misrepresenting Christ. We are called to represent Christ, but we must be more cautious and we must guard ourselves against the danger of misrepresenting Christ. And that happens often in our lives. When Jesus calls everyone to sell their position and give it to poor and take up the cross and walk, we preach prosperity gospel and about monetary blessings. When he asks to sell position and give to poor, we talk about the prosperity gospel and about monetary blessings. When Jesus accepts and embraces without prejudice, we divide ourselves by caste, class, color and creed. Yes, it's time to look into ourselves. Whether we represent Christ or we misrepresent Christ. Disciples are sent out for ministry. In the Red Gospel lesson, we can uh, read that disciples are sent out for ministry. They are sent out just with a staff and a pair of sandals that we can read in verse 8, which implies the simplicity of a person who goes as an ambassador of God. And this instruction was given by Jesus. And this unique instruction explains us that disciples has to trust in God than what they possess. They possess nothing. They have only one staff and a pair of sandals. And they must live with the food which is offered by the villagers. And that clearly says that they must put trust in God, not with their possessions. What we do, especially in the present pandemic situation, the COVID-19 created a panic situation. Many with confusions, we, even many of us with confusions about our future, many lost their job, their business, their livelihood, and many are depressed of the situation. And we don't know what we are going to do. We are thinking about whether we uh, get salary in the coming months. We are thinking about how our business will move on in the coming months and how uh, my savings and loan can be settled. These are, the, these are the thoughts that we have in our mind. But as an ambassador of God, we should not lose hope. We are here to share the hope that we receive from Jesus. In this situation, as ambassadors of Christ, we are called to reach out. Yes, go out into the world and share the hope you receive from Jesus. Share the message of reconciliation and bring people to Christ's fold. Let us take up the ministry of reconciliation as ambassadors of Christ. We, the people of God, the chosen one, set apart for Christ, are strengthened by God to be ambassadors of Christ. And let us go out and share the message of reconciliation. Let us go out and share the message of hope. Let us go out and share the message of love that we received from Jesus. And it's our bound duty to share the hope to others and bring them to Christ's fold. May God bless us. May God equip us and may God strengthen us to be the ambassadors of Christ. May God bless these words. Amen. As people of God, we have a calling that we need to be ambassadors of Christ. Shall we all affirm our faith with that in our mind? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead on the third day he rose again yes. he ascended into heaven he seated at the right hand of the father and he will come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen i heard the voice of jesus say come unto me and rest church hymnal hymn number 183 i heard the voice of jesus say come unto me and rest let us pray he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will abide in the shadow of the almighty i'll say to the lord my refuge and my fortress my god in whom i trust loving heavenly father we thank you for this wonderful sunday lord you have blessed us to see this sunday lord we submit ourselves in your mighty hand you are protecting us you are leading us and you are guiding us in this pandemic situation we thank you for that we thank you for all the blessings that we receive every day lord especially we pray for the people those who are celebrating their birthdays this week lord you bless them to see this new day and you bless them to step into a new year in their life 
as they step into this new year let your love let your joy let your blessings fill them all through this year lord we pray for the good life that you have provided them lord lord we submit the upcoming days in your mighty hand lord you bless them you guide them and you protect them and you fill them with your words of wisdom lord we also pray for the couples who are celebrating their wedding anniversary lord you be with them and we believe that you are uh, with them all these years of marriage lord we thank you for that you are leading them with your advisors with your words with your guidance lord we thank you for that and lord as they step into a new year of togetherness you be with them and you help them to remember the vows that they have taken on their marriage lord help them to lead their life according to their vows they have said during their marriage lord you be with them and you bless them uh, we believe that you are with them and you are blessing them with abundant blessings and with choicest blessings we thank you for that you continue to bless them and guide them we submit the people those who are remembering special days in their lives lord you are the provider and you are blessing them with these special occasions we thank you for that continue to bless them with special occasions lord we thank you for that once again we submit all who are celebrating their birthdays remembering their wedding anniversaries and remembering their special occasions you be with them you bless them you protect them and you guide them in jesus name we pray amen, amen. the lord be with you and with your spirit let us pray lord have mercy upon us christ have mercy upon us lord have mercy upon us our father in heaven holy be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen the collect for peace o god who is the author of peace and lover of concord in whose knowledge our eternal life stands whose service is perfect freedom defend us your humble servants from all assaults of evil that we surely trusting in your defense may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of jesus christ our lord amen the collect for grace O Lord our refuge almighty and everlasting God who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin neither run into any kind of danger but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance to do always that which is righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord amen almighty God who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you and as promised that when two or three are gathered together in your name you will grant their request fulfill now o lord the desires and petitions of your servants as may be most expedient for them granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come life everlasting amen now to the one who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing to the only god our savior through jesus christ our lord be glory majesty power and authority before all time and now and forever shall we all sing from the 
songs of praise song number 298 we have heard the joyful sound jesus saves jesus saves